Okay, we're back here with Jan and also Alex Rendon. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here, Sally. All right, so we are continuing our conversation about nurses and becoming a nurse, um, this time less focused on the financial side. So let's start with how does someone, how does a student become a nurse? You know, and then, yeah, let's start there. How does a student become a nurse? Okay, absolutely. I'm happy to take this one. Um, there are actually quite a few different pathways to becoming a nurse, as well as lots of different types of nurses that are out there. Um, so one pathway a student might consider is getting a certification um, that would be like your LVN certification. And that's kind of the, the lower level of nursing. Um, going up from there, they might consider getting an associate's at maybe their community college or other select four-year universities as well. Um, I'd say the most common pathway is the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing though. And that is usually what I encourage students ultimately to pursue is, and kind of the reason behind that is hospitals are looking to hire um, BSNs. They want you to have your bachelor's degree. It's actually a requirement for their accreditation that 80% of their nursing staff have that bachelor's degree. Um, and with BSN, that's a couple different pathways as well. And we can get into that a little bit more today, but there are direct entry programs at some colleges. Other colleges, you may start pre-nursing and then enter the program later. Um, and then finally, for students who maybe go through, get their bachelor's degree, if you're listening maybe as a, a transfer student and just deciding nursing is for you, um, know that there are still pathways. Um, in fact, my college roommate, she got her bachelor's in psychology and then decided she really wanted to be a nurse. So she went on to do an accelerated degree in nursing, got that nursing credential quickly, then became an MSN and went on even further and is now a nurse practitioner. So even more schooling. Um, so as I said, lots of different pathways and all really great ones. Mm -hmm. A student of mine at Whittier initially was pre-med and uh, and very strong student, like absolutely would have been competitive for medical school, um, you know, but she realized the amount of schooling she would need. And she just thought, I don't want, like, I want to work in the field. I want to take care of people, but there are other pathways. So she became a nurse practitioner. And, um, and I think that's worked beautifully for her in terms of balance with family life, her husband, her children. And but also doing work that she really loves and is like, you know, I think reasonably well compensated for too, which is nice as well and important. Yeah. Yeah. So where what kinds of I mean, I think everybody knows that nurses work in hospitals, right? And that they work in doctor's offices. But what are some other options? Like what's kind of a breadth of places where nurses might work? Yeah, so the obvious ones are definitely at hospitals, your doctor's office. When you go in, you're probably greeted by a nurse there before you see the doctor. But other places nurses may work are like home health care. Um, they may work at skilled nursing facilities or even with outpatient care centers. Um, there's also a lot of great options if you have the travel bug and want to see the world a little bit. Travel nurses are always in demand. And additionally, um, the military, maybe not the first one that comes to mind, but military also needs yeah. nurses. They mm -hmm. sure do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jan actually brought that up and that's a good way to get a lot of it paid for. And then I want to like put in a little thing with travel nurses too. A friend of mine's sister is a travel nurse and she's like, she's up in Maine right now and she loves it. She's been able to go, she's going to, I think to Florida next. I mean, it's like, yeah. they're not just sending you to like kind of out of the way places. They're sending you to some very beautiful places, you know? So Sure. And I'll just add that I have a friend who is a nurse who works for a pharmaceutical company. They wanted to draw on her nursing experience to do research and develop products. And then private companies that are doing research will also hire nurses to roll that research out because they need that medical training. Mm -hmm. So, so many options, so many options. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think you can even at this point work remotely. I recently had a medical procedure and I got calls from nurses who worked for my insurance company just to sure. see how things were going. So yeah. a lot of options, a lot, a lot of, of options. options. Yeah. yeah. So let's think though. I mean, I think a lot of students, you know, the word is out. I think that nursing is in demand. It's a good profession. Um, but I will say that I, I have students who say, oh, I want to be a nurse. And it, it, it's, I sometimes think like, well, have you thought carefully about this? Because you just told me you don't like science and you don't like math. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I appreciate that you want to work with people, which is wonderful, but there are other pathways for that, you know? <laughs> so, but maybe Alex, maybe you could kind of go into it a little more specifically, like what, like, yeah, what, you know, <laughs> what questions should students be asking themselves? I, I love that point. That made me think of um, so many of the nursing students I've worked with in the past or um, those who say they're interested in, in nursing say, oh, I really want to be a nurse because I want to help people. Right. And my response is, what do you think I'm doing here? I help <laughs> so you know, you can do so many different things to help people. But I, that is, of course, a key part of nursing is you want to have that human interaction. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very physical. Um, so I'd say question number one is how do you feel about physical work, um, stress, and long hours? Mm -hmm. You know, starting off, you're probably going to have at least those 12 hour shifts. Yeah. And is that something you're up for? Is it okay that those might be overnight too? Mm -hmm. um, you know, eventually you can get that job as the NP working, you know, nine to five or um, working remotely, but that's not going to be your first job. You're going to mm -hmm. have to get the work in there. Um, I would say on top of that, you know, being able to deal with people on the best day of their life, but also the worst day of their life mm -hmm. and potentially back to back. And are you going to be able to handle that emotionally? I know that can be really, really heavy and um, hard not to take home. So I think is really something to consider. Um, the obvious one, which is never that obvious to students is, you know, are you okay with gross things? <laughs> um, <laughs> it you know, sounds silly, but a lot of the work you do, not so pleasant. Right. It's not functions. silly. Let's just say bodily functions, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> bodily functions. If yeah. you're like me and go to the doctor's office and can't watch when they give you the shot and, you know, do a blood draw, probably not for you. I would make a right. terrible nurse. If I have to look away or squint, <laughs> you don't want to do that. So thinking of those things. And then of course, yes, the math and science, you need that math and science to be successful in school and then on to be successful as a nurse. So I think that is something you have to think really deeply about and know that if you want to work in healthcare, there are so many professions besides being a doctor or being a nurse that you can still be within that field too. Yeah. I worked with a student who had been given some very, very bad advice as a high school student that she didn't have to keep taking math after her sophomore year. I was, oh. I was really angry on her behalf. Like who told her that? And her goal was to be a nurse and she just was not scoring how she needed right. to score on the math section of the placement test. And so I said, what about dental hygiene? I don't think they have similar bars. And she thought that was a great idea. And you look up the pain, the average income, and it's, yeah, it's below it's nursing, insane. but it's not that much below. <laughs> right. So right. do keep those in mind. There are other possible professions for sure. Um, all right. So we talked, we talked about the need for math and science. What are some specific classes that students should be taking in high school? Yeah, so I'd say in high school, definitely if it's offered anatomy and physiology, that's going to give you the best idea of the type of work you'd be doing. Mm -hmm. um, along with that, a couple other science courses, you know, biological sciences, chemistry, um, that's going to be uh, really foundational. I hear that a lot with nursing students and getting through the nursing program is chemistry is usually the hardest. Yes. 
one of them. Yep. Janice, is that your, your <laughs> That was what you? all of my son's uh, classmates said was, hey, am I going to make it through this chemistry class? And of course they did because they mm -hmm. all became nurses. But yeah, chem was the hardest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will say that some of the more selecting nurses, nursing schools also do want to see physics. Like, I don't think this mm -hmm. is common, but like University of Pennsylvania, which is, of course, an Ivy super selective, like they wanted to see physics. I saw it on their web page. Yeah, and my son did take physics as well as all the ones that mm -hmm. Alex mentioned. And then two courses I'll mention that I think helped him a lot was also um, AP statistics he took mm -hmm. and then AP psychology. Um, and that helped him while he was in his nursing program. It gave him some good foundation. So um, those are just helpful to add to your, your mix if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about the math? We've talked about math, but how far should they go? I would think at least pre-calculus, but is calculus useful or am I inflating that, Alex? Yeah, I would say if we can make it to at least pre-calculus, that's going to be really foundational. I think a lot of competitive programs out there, you know, if we're talk, talking those direct BSN programs, mm -hmm. if you have calculus, even better. Yes. Um, the AP stats, great. Um, but ideally, you know, the four years of math is going to be mm -hmm. really important. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel so bad for that student you mentioned. So two years yeah. in, and then that's, it's just tough. It's no, I'm still, day. her counselor told her that. And I just think that counselor should be fired. Like I just, <laughs> and anyway, let's not get derailed, but I'm still mad <laughs> when I think about it, this poor girl. But anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, we so we've talked about academics and obviously good grades are very important. I, I think that goes without saying, but I'll just say it. But what about extracurricular activities? I think people don't always realize that this can play a role too. Yeah, absolutely. Jan, I'd love to hear some of the things that maybe your son did. Um, Sure. Um, absolutely. I do think extracurriculars are important. I think if someone is evaluating a student for, you know, direct entry nursing, they're going to want to see that they had some experience in healthcare, and that can be one of the extracurriculars. So my son volunteered at both a hospital two summers in a row. He also volunteered at a local nursing home. And so that did show that he had exposure certainly to um, the health sciences field. It also helped him determine kind of the area that he wanted to go. Um, having both experiences, he said, oh, I definitely want to work in a hospital. He really wanted that um, ability to interface with lots of different types of patients versus being in a nursing home, you're going to be with just one. He enjoys all, but he wanted to be, to be able to experience all. So that certainly helped him figure out what he wanted to do, but it also helped show the admissions committee that he has some hands-on experience. He spent two summers in both a hospital and nursing home, so that helped a lot. He also for four years of high school, he was called, um, I think they call him a base buddy. Um, essentially, it's through the Little Wiffles program. So he worked with um, physically challenged children to play wiffle ball. So Little Wiffles. And so he was a base buddy. So it showed that he had an interest in helping that population. He had some great experience. It's great community, community service. So he also did that. Um, he also worked part time um, to you know, pay for his car and all that good stuff. Um, he also was in the National Honor Society, the Science Honor Society, the History Honor Society. So we did a lot of community service through the requirements to be in those honor societies. So we did a lot of that as well. Um, he participated in um, Dean's Council, things like that. That's a leadership group. Um, so he did a lot of I guess variety. And he's also um, a football player and captain of his football team, which I also think showed kind of leadership and the bil the ability to balance sports and grades and all of that. So we had a pretty well rounded list of ECs. Um, yeah. Does that sound about right, Alex? I would say definitely well-rounded, probably above and beyond. It sounds like you all were very, very busy, but <laughs> <laughs> those are exactly some of the things that I would suggest for students. I love that he did the volunteering. I think if you can volunteer at a hospital setting or an assisted living facility or hospice, those are great places to get that experience and also figure out, yeah, is this really for me? 
Um, within your high school, I think there are some great opportunities for clubs and organizations. Yeah. If your high school has a HOSA chapter for um, future uh, medical leaders, definitely recommend joining that. If they don't have one, maybe grab a teacher and see if we can start one at your school. Yeah. Really great organization. Um, and then some other things I might suggest too is um, looking into learning basic life support and first aid yeah. skills. Mm -hmm. So some practical skills and you can do that through organizations like the Red Cross yep. or um, the American Health Association. A lot of community events will often yes. um, host these opportunities as well. So looking into some of those more practical hands-on experiences. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say finally, just thinking about you know, also how we use our, our summer, maybe there's um, a college summer program for nursing or pre-nursing that the student might be interested in. Um, so thinking about that, or even um, just doing an informational interview or some job shadowing with a yeah. nurse. And those can be maybe your pediatric nurse. Um, but also I think the, the one that gets forgotten here is you have a nurse at your high school. Go yeah, yeah. Lunch and interview them. So know that you have a lot of great resources that are just right there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great suggestions. Absolutely. All right. So we just have like a kind of a minute left. I'm, I'm um, I don't want to give too much, uh, take too much time away from the last segment, but are there some quick tips for how to evaluate different nursing programs to find the right one for the student? Yeah, definitely. I would say um, first thing we might want to look at is what is the pass rate of the NCLEX yep. exam? And so that's the, the exam you essentially need to pass to become a nurse. So what is a good pass rate? If you see 90% or above, that's a strong pass rate. That's yep. probably a good program. Yep. Um, then I would say thinking about your pathway. How long is this pathway going to take you to complete? Um, is it, you know, are we looking at the associates program or the bachelor's of science in nursing? What's average time to degree there? Um, then thinking about total costs. So probably having a call with my friends on the finance team <laughs> and maybe chatting with you in the future. Um, but, you know, thinking about what is this going to cost me over time? And then what are the requirements to stay in the program? Because yeah. every nursing program out there is going to have specific requirements. Yep. So not just for entrance, but to maintain yep. um, being in the program. So knowing that ahead of time, yep. um, also knowing what the clinical expectations are. So your in-person experience in the hospital, um, you know, how many hours are you spending there? Um, and then finally thinking about location and, and does that matter to um, some states you not just need to pass the NCLEX, but you have to meet individual state requirements. Yeah. So if you know you want to live in a particular location, it's good to check out those resources and look those up to make sure that you're checking all of those boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And also just the availability of hospitals and clinical sites, because at some schools, they're right on campus and it makes it really easy to get to your clinical as part of your day. Um, and then there might also be a children's hospital right down the street, which might be of interest, whereby some programs might only have, you know, one hospital or it's or it's far away. So kind of kind of knowing where the clinical opportunities are as well, I think is helpful. That's something mm -hmm. that we looked at for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, great. Well, listen, thanks so much to both of you. I really appreciate your time here. And your Go expertise. nurses! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go nurses. All right. So um, we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, I'll be talking with Kara and Megan Courtois about physical, occupational therapy, and athletic training. Thanks so nice. much. 